Aloha, and welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihe'e. We've got another interesting show for you today, discussing an, an important subject for the people of Hawaii. We are going to be talking about Hawaiian nationalism. Woo! And whether or not being a Hawaiian nationalist entitles you to equal treatment. Mm. I happen to believe it does, and uh, as my guest this afternoon, I have Poka Le Lahui. Lai, Lai, Lai Nui. Lai Nui. Lai Nui. <laughs> yeah. This is my classmate. <laughs> and I knew, him, I knew him when he was just Poka. <laughs> anyway, welcome to our show. Thank you, John. Poka is a, um, an author, among other things, a commentator, political commentator, and mm. a lawyer. Is uh, and an old friend, and uh, well, I shouldn't use the word friend, but a long time friend, a long time friend, not an old friend, but a long time friend, and a classmate. So, welcome mm -hmm. to the show. Thank you, John. And um, you, you've become very uh, much a part of the Hawaiian activist movement in, in, the, in the state of Hawaii. And uh, one of the things that I have personally um, recognized about your activities and uh and actually I'm really um supportive of you. you seem to be a unifier i mean whenever i mm. i hear you talk about any of these issues you seem to start from the position that the enemy of the native hawaiian community is not really all these other institutions it is our lack to unify. Uh, is that a correct? Uh... I think that would summarize it well. And what I do is I follow from two kupuna. Okay. One guy's name is none other than Abraham Lincoln. Wow. Okay. Yep. He uh -huh. said, a nation divided against itself cannot stand. Wow. That was his uh, most important uh, statement. Right. What a wonderful idea. Abraham Lincoln, father of the Hawaiian nation. You know, <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know but, if he might be a mother. You know, I don't know. <laughs> but you see, thoughts are important. And they uh, go through racial lines. They go through national lines. The wisdom that comes down from ancestors or from any place, from even children, right. has to be seen for the weight of the wisdom itself. So, Abraham Lincoln said something very important that we should take heed to. Right. There's another kupuna who also said something, and that was Kuhio. Okay. When okay. he said, we cannot continue to act like crabs. We've got to kick the bucket over so that we all can get out. Well, I so, think that's such a powerful message, you know. And, and, mm -hmm. and a lot of the obstacles that uh, sometimes we, we face... Uh, in, in a sense, self-imposed. Okay. Self-imposed. Antipilahi, another kupuna, would, would instruct. She would say, you know, what you need to do is distinguish between reality in fact and reality by agreement. I got it. Okay. Oh, man, that <laughs> is a very heavy statement. I mean, that is a really heavy statement. Yeah. And so, for me, I was, I'm thrown in you. Uh, <laughs> <She's> <laughs> no, 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 no. So I asked her, explain. Yeah. And she said, Hawaiian. What is a Hawaiian? Yeah. And I said, oh, a Hawaiian is a person who descends from ancestors who were in Hawaii prior to 1778, the arrival of James Cook. Right. And she says, that's reality by agreement. Now tell me about the Hawaiian in reality, in fact. I says, well, what do you mean? She says, does a Hawaiian cry? Does he laugh? Does he love? Does he hate? Does he hunger? Who is he really? Yep. So you look into the essence, the reality, in fact, not by the agreement of how we choose to define a Hawaiian by his religion or his geography or his racial ancestry. So uh, that ability to always pierce through, do that analysis, pierce through, and get down to the reality in fact. By the way, that's really good advice for everybody. Yeah. I mean, much of how we operate in life is, and much of what we call fact, is really based on a, a, all of us agreeing that that is so. You know, as yeah. opposed to 
what may in truth be there. Because at times, if you don't come to an agreement as to what is a subject matter, you're arguing more about definition without really understanding that it's definitional, which is a problem that divides. So let's say you and I will go out to Makua Beach, nighttime, but there's a moon up there. And I say, John, look at the moon. You look at my finger. You think the finger the moon? No, the moon is the well, I, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> well, I wanted to tell the audience that uh, Boca actually was a radio host. And uh, I'm paying you back, by the way, for inviting me to your show and uh, putting me yeah. under the gun. So, And he and I are classmates from the University right. of Hawaii. You know what I have this afternoon? <laughs> I happen to have the, uh, I don't know what you call these things, but these were the, this was our idea of the yearbook back in That's 1976. Right. No, 73. We are the class yeah. of 1973. The, the first graduating class. And I don't know if you can see this, but if you ever get a hold of that, this is our guest, and I'm going to block me out. I don't, <laughs> I don't want anybody to see what I was. I actually had hair back then. You know. <laughs> me too. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, uh, you were the first person, and I tell this I, I, in, the, in the speeches and, and various things, that the... I remember back then when you invited a bunch of us, all, all Native Hawaiian students, mm. by agreement, and we came together <laughs> and we uh, sat down and you talked to us about Hawaiian sovereignty and Hawaiian nationalism. And mm. we had to do this in a meeting late at night. I mean, today it's so passe, right. everybody, yeah. you know, talking about it one way or the other. Mm -hmm. But back mm -hmm. then, it was just the germination of things yeah. to come. And you kept working on it. In fact, uh, tell us a little bit about your activities at the United Nations. Well, I, I went to the United Nations because I found that the system within Hawaii was so blocked that you could not get them to even pay attention to the kind of historical facts that we were talking about. We graduated in 1976. Right. I ended up representing Napi Pulava in 1977. Right. He was the reputed underworld leader for Hawaii. And at that time, I raised the subject of jurisdiction, whether or not the United States had jurisdiction over, over Hawaiian nationals. So when they charged him with double murder, double kidnap, I responded as his attorney. And I said, we refuse to dignify the court by even entering a plea. We ask instead, who are you foreigners to come into Hawaii? Judge us by your foreign laws. All right, all right. And you I remember not. back then, that made headlines <laughs> all over the state of Hawaii. And what we needed was to get the attention of the Hawaii community. And, you know, I just barely graduated from law school, almost went broke, and then had no money, had to open a small shop out in Waianae, and just tried to do law practice. In the meantime, my client was in jail for a couple of years. We broke. There was no way we could advertise about the history of the overthrow, the illegalities. Without doing something like... Without the, calling attention, to, yeah. Directly to the uh, jurisdiction. Yeah. So That's, it's like a jujitsu move. As the newspapers and television was coming in after this native Hawaiian who finally organized the underworld right. to make him a big crook. Well, right. we wanted to pose the question, who's the bigger crook? Right. I got it. I got it. And as a result of that, you also got attention at the United Nations, right? Well, as a result of that, then there were a number of cases, like when Sam King told me that uh, he would pull my license because I said I was not a U.S. citizen. Yeah. <laughs> no, I want to get real clear with people. You said you were a citizen of Hawaii. That's not, right. So you were a Hawaiian nationalist. Right. Yeah, not, you know, it's not just I'm not a U.S. citizen. It's not like mm -hmm. you're some immigrant to Hawaii. The, what you were reestablishing was standing on the history for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, a, it was a costly declaration. Yeah. So judge after judge after judge, and there were many others. They represented a lot of the homeless. And we went in and we challenged, for example, the Sand Island cases. Right. And Waimanalo and Waianae, the homeless cases. And we always came in challenging jurisdiction. The judges always refused to look at that history 
The history was undeniable. One judge, a district court judge, came off the bench afterwards and told me, why are you wasting the court's time with these motions? We, we admit we cannot challenge your historical facts, but if I find in your favor, they're going to appeal my, my decision and the Supreme Court going to overturn me. Right. So why may waste my time? Yeah. Yeah. And I said, hey, once you put on the robe, don't come crying on my shoulders because you cannot look at the Yeah, uh, because facts. It, was, it was still in, uh, a legitimate, uh, it was, well, at least a legitimate stand. Uh, uh, the uh, stand was not legitimate, well, was, was legitimate, but the United States Congress didn't recognize it until 1993, the apology resolution. When the apology resolution. The great confession. Right. Comes well, yeah, it was the, but... It, it was also within the Hawaiian community. Uh, well, maybe I should say that within the Hawaiian community and the Hawaii community, this idea of Hawaiian nationalism mm -hmm. was, you know, was slowly, being awakened. It was being awakened. Yeah, that's, that's a that's a very good term. So yeah. part of that was doing things like you had just suggested in order to get people thinking about right. the issue. To call attention, to educate. But you see, the powers of Hawaii, the judges of the courts refused to recognize it. So I had to find a different venue. And that was the international venue. And that's where you took the, 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 the history too. Yes. And what, how successful, I mean, what, what, what happened as it, a result of it, that? It's a matter of building the case I had to go through the doorway of indigenous people's rights because uh, we were so far behind in terms of Hawaiian nationalism that people simply wouldn't consider the idea that Hawaii was an independent nation or is an independent nation. But we went through the doorway of indigenous peoples and the discrimination against indigenous peoples. So I eventually became elected as a... Well, even the, even the United Nations in those days, the United Nations itself didn't really have, uh, didn't, hadn't really dealt with that issue. So you were, in a sense, on the ground floor of Actually, that the, whole awareness. You see, the United Nations had been dealing with that issue oh. in a different part of the United Nations. Okay. Under the decolonization work of the United Nations. But we couldn't get inside that door because the United States continues to block us in that door. Yeah, so that, if, you, that, that Hawaii is not a colony, so therefore... Right, and the Statehood Act, and that we are now a state of the United States. So they right. kept blocking that. So what I had to do was go through the Indigenous Peoples Avenue. And as I raise the Indigenous issue, I also tag on to it the Hawaiian sovereignty issue, the illegality of the presence of the United States here in Hawaii and and which by the way is pretty basic history today I mean uh, you, you know elementary schools across the state now teaching. teach the history <laughs> that you were trying to get people to recognize and yet in 1977 78 the Pulava case right the judge of the circuit court John Lanham after I present the address that uh, who was at Cleveland addresses to the joint houses of Congress and I'm reading his address into the record because I'm telling him I have the right to make my record to appeal to the Supreme Court right so there's nothing he can do but allow me to read it in so I read it in and then he interrupts me he says mr. Burgess this is the most fantastic story I have ever heard I never heard that story yeah, there, a lot of people hadn't heard that story. Uh, the, the whole movement was was yeah. built on bits and pieces of learning. Yeah, and, and in songs and kaulana na pua and, all, and, and that. all that stuff. But so even many of our Hawaiian people had lost the national consciousness or failed to continue to maintain that national consciousness. And so what we need to do is is reawaken it and continue the national consciousness. You see, a nation never dies right. until a national consciousness is dead. I got it. We're going to be taking a short break right now, and when we come back, what I want to follow up on is the present day, which mm -hmm. is we find ourselves going from a time when you had to actually raise this in the federal court mm -hmm. to today when we actually have a, a lot of people. And as I understand it, 
a lot of them obviously are Native Hawaiian, but also non-Native uh, Hawaiian by our right. definition, <laughs> yeah. who are claiming them, who are claiming to be Hawaiian nationalists. Mm -hmm. And so today, it's not a matter of uh, selling the idea; it's a matter of, um, I guess, implementing something about it. So we'll be right back, and uh, thank you very much. Uh, we'll be right back. Aloha, I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock, live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on ThinkTech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go Beyond the Lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. Welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihe'e and our guest, Mr. Poka Lanui. Nui, yeah. <laughs> and by the way, if you want to call us, if you have any questions, and we definitely are interested in what you have to say on this subject, would you please, uh, you can call us at 808 374 2014. 808 374 2014, and there is a way which I don't know what how to tell you that you can actually do all of this on your computer as well. But anyway, here we are. We're back. So as a result of all these efforts, uh, you know, we we'll go from those days to mm -hmm. now. So mm -hmm. to right now, what what uh, seems to be happening in Hawaii is that there are a lot of people who are claiming to be Hawaiian nationalists. Now, that's right. W what does that mean? A Hawaiian nationalist is a person who defines himself by his nationality. Not okay, and, and let's make that distinction. Okay. What's the difference between native Hawaiian and native Hawaiian or Hawaiian nationality? Yeah. If you because back, a lot of us seem to think it's the same thing. Yeah, and it's not. Okay. If you go back to 1893, at a time where there was no question about the existence of the Hawaiian nation, who were the nationals of that nation? And they were people whose loyalty and allegiance was to the Hawaiian nation. Was that nationalism then, as, as you're defining it, the same as uh, citizenship? Almost, but not necessarily so. Okay. Let me define it this way. A national is a definition that the international community attributes to people of that entity, nation. of that nation. Citizenship is defined by the nation itself as to who's a citizen and who's not a citizen. They may still be recognized as part of us, as our nationals. Take, for example, some of the Samoans. Right. They're U.S. nationals, but they're not given citizenship. So citizenship is an internal discussion within the nation. Nationals is a general international attribution to who should be attributed to that nation. And the other, okay, let's say Japanese living in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. They would be citizens of the United States if they were born here, right? If they, they were... Not well, necessarily. They, okay. Let's say they had been Hawaiian citizens. Their ancestors were No, Hawaiian I mean, I'm, I'm just trying to get the distinctions between yeah. racial, national, and um, okay. whatever, and citizen. Uh, yeah. If they can trace their ancestry back to the Hawaiian nation, Japanese, Filipinos, Hawaiians, anybody. Portuguese, anybody, and they say my loyalty and allegiance is still with the Hawaiian nation. Then they would be a national. They're Hawaiian nationals. Okay, but until the nation itself is restored, there is actually no criteria for citizenship. Well, uh, yes, don't change, uh, don't change the, the terms to citizenship. No, There's, I'm just trying to make the difference. Yeah, okay. 
You say until the nation is restored. Or, or, Many or, people or, saying we have the nation over here, right which is now. occupied. Yeah. So, so somebody defines citizenship, but citizenship is a different. It's a different category. It, it is a different category. Now, when you get into that, you have the word citizen, and you have the word uh, subject. Yes. And some yes. people well, get confused was, about that, yeah? Yeah, I'm trying not to get confused. Okay, so <laughs> we are, the nationals are those who believe that they, and who can. Whose loyalty and allegiance is to the Hawaii nation. All right. Now, suppose a person spend, was born in Hawaii, but cannot trace an ancestry all the way back to 1893. Yeah, in Hawaii. Or just arrived here 10 years ago and end up teaching Hawaiian language to our Hawaiian kids. Which has happened. Oh, yeah. Which <laughs> happens. Yeah, they, you'd be surprised. Uh, there are people who, uh, friends of mine, who can actually right. uh, and, them. and whose loyalty is to Hawaii, not to the United States. And if Hawaii, when, when Hawaii gets recognized by the Americans as being a nation, they will, of course, change their, or, or change the citizenship or the nationality immediately to Hawaiian. Okay. How do you define who is a Hawaiian national? Okay, so this is actually, in a way, it's, it, it's, a, it's a political choice, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm trying to it's, distinguish it from a racial. Yeah, it's not a racial. Good point. Yeah, yeah, you know, I'm trying to make that this is not a racial classification. It may be that people of a particular racial group That's right. uh, find themselves you know, in that category, but it's not racial. R racial would be it's, the third classification. It's that one's we could. political allegiance, not one's race, not one's religion, not one's language that they speak, or any other category. When we talk about this subject, we are talking about a political subject. A political status. And that's the dictionary you pull out, a political dictionary. Right. So, you know, the idea of Hawaiian culture, Hawaiian language, and so forth, that is still an important classification, but it is not the classification from which nationalism necessarily That's flows. I mean, it, it, it happens to be... Okay, we got that, I think, uh, okay. <laughs> people, you know, pretty cleared up. But the point is that a lot of people today, uh, at least, well, enough to make it's a growing. difference. It's, it's growing. a growing number of people today. Yeah have come forward and uh, taken that as their uh, choice, mm -hmm. made a political choice. And as said, as a matter of, polit of their political stand, really, mm -hmm. that I consider myself or, he, or she considers herself to be a Hawaiian national, right? That's right. It's, it's even more than political. It's a moral choice for many of us. Okay. Our loyalty and allegiance is to Hawaii. It's not to the occupier of Hawaii. Okay, okay. No. I got it. Uh, now, <clears throat> what does it mean? It to be, means... To, as to be a Hawaiian national in, uh, in Hawaii today. On one hand, it gives a person an identity. On the other hand, it also allows a society that now controls the system to discriminate against that person. For example, I, a Hawaiian national, cannot vote in the Hawaii elections. Because? Because I'm not a U.S. citizen. Now, can you be both? Some people can. Other people say it's a contradiction. How can I be a citizen and, and volunteer to call myself a citizen of the occupying nation? Yeah, yeah. yeah I can so, see, if you say it that way, then I can see the morality yeah. of the choice. Mm -hmm. But if I, if I say, uh, for example, that this uh, occupation is immoral anyway, so what, you know, if they want to play like that, I'll play like that. that <laughs> you know, that, then I can see where you're saying there, there is this moral aspect. If, there, if, you, if you're just doing it as a matter of politics, then maybe you might be able to do both. But some people believe that the choice is not only political, it is moral. Yeah, and, and there's no right or wrong answer. It's the idea of learning to walk the crooked path straight. Some yeah, people... that's another good phrase. You see, you keep <laughs> passing these things. I wish I had a pen. It's your good friend who told me that. <laughs> <laughs> the sensei up in uh, uh, Kalihi. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you mean Roshi? Yeah, Roshi. Yeah, he was something else. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
Well, when, well, anyway, he, he says, the quest is not to walk the straight path, but to learn to walk the crooked path straight. So I can be an attorney in the American judicial system, and yet I can also meander to be true to myself and my, my moral standards. But there's enough variation. Other people don't have the abilities such, you and, such as you and I to walk in both worlds. They are stuck and they are... They oh, don't they may choose to... then. They may, not, they may have very be able, like yourself. You may be really able to do both worlds, but as a matter of moral well, choice. I yeah. like that. I like that aspect of that choice. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. I'm not going to participate in immorality. And the act mm -hmm. of the illegal occupation may, in fact, be an immoral act and, and, and under anybody's universal law. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm like, you know, this, that's a choice. And that yep. is a choice. That, by the way, that's the same choice that thousands of um, young Americans made regarding the Vietnam War. Oh, absolutely right. You absolutely know, right. I mean, there, it was a moral choice. Because the obligation of citizenship was to be drafted. Mm -hmm. And they mm -hmm. said, no, I can't do that, although I could play the game, because yeah. I have a, this is a moral stand. So I understand that. So now we come down to that core group of people. And that is continually growing. And growing. But they are being discriminated as they live in Hawaii. Yeah. Well, you know, we, we got to move. Uh, you know, they got to be discriminated again because they took that stand. What is the solution? Have you got something that. The state of Hawaii, not the federal government, leave the feds out. The state of Hawaii should pass a resolution and then following that with a law saying that there should be no discrimination against Hawaiian nationals. You see, I, I, I understand that from your historic and, and the Hawaiian, the, the, from the perspective of somebody making that moral choice. I also think that if you really think about it, the American thing to do would be to do what you suggested. Mm -hmm. To say to these people who are morally and politically committed to being Hawaiian nationals that we are not going to treat you any differently because you took this stand. And, 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 and yeah, they, I, I don't know why anybody as a matter of public policy. Now, I noticed that the legislature is passing a bill to protect immigrants to Hawaii. People who, in fact, are choosing right. to be here. Yeah. And they seem to be getting a lot of support. Well, this group, and I'm pontificating a little bit because of time, but in this particular group you're describing mm -hmm. actually have no other place to go. True. This is their home. And oftentimes we never move. We have been here all the time. And have no place to go. Well, I want to invite people to, uh, you know, comment and to talk to Polka and to talk to the people who call themselves nationals and to uh, hopefully the state of Hawaii and to pe the le members of the legislature. I think this is a very important issue and mm -hmm. I want to thank you very much for being on my show this afternoon. It's my pleasure. Mahalo. Aloha.